Hi, my name is Sharon and I would like to thank TEDx for inviting me here today to talk about a topic of next chapter. The title of my talk today is called Should, 2020's new curse word. I want to ask you all a question. What is the one thing that you would tell a younger version of you? Mine's simple. It would be to stop putting so much weight into what other people have to say. Instead, stand up, take charge of that situation and move through it. Notice how I said move through though and not move past or get over. That wording is important because it allows us to process everything that we have in life to form the future version of us. Now, so since today we're talking about the, the words next chapter, uh, I don't know about you, but I've heard this quite a lot, that phrase next chapter in my life, both personally and professionally. So to give you a little bit of backstory on me, I'm the oldest of five kids. Uh, had dreams of becoming an elementary school teacher when I was a kid. Worked hard through college, graduated with a master's in ed, and bam. Have you ever felt that sometimes in life, in order to get you to go down the correct road, the next chapter, to get you to move, God has to hit you upside the head with a two by four? Well, he does for me. So apparently I'm hard headed and I don't like to listen to subtle nudges. Because once I graduated in 2004, the week of my wedding with my ex-husband, I learned that I had stage four melanoma and that it was in my lungs, lymph nodes, and brain. Talk about a two by four. My next chapter in life was supposed to be that of a, an elementary school teacher and instead I was a cancer patient. That's a whole different book. It's not a next chapter. There's no chapter in my life that I ever planned for cancer. But to make a long story short, I tried chemotherapy and a bunch of other therapies for about a year and a half and nothing worked. I was enrolled in one of the first immunotherapy clinical trials and in just a couple of months and a few, in four treatments, I had no evidence of disease. And I've been there ever since. That, right there, that moment was when I heard again the term next chapter in life. So here I was, super excited. Oncologists just told me that, you know, you're gonna live and I was elated and then all of a sudden I felt, wait a minute, I don't feel like this is a next chapter. I still feel tired. I was in a 350 pound body at the time. Everything hurt. I was tired and I mean tired, like sleep all weekend kind of tired. And even though everyone else was saying that I should be feeling a certain way that I was given, and I really was given my next chapter in life, I still felt stuck in chapter one. But my ex and I knew that we really, really wanted a family. In fact, we'd been planning for that for a very long time. So uh, we talked about it again and then quickly realized that it probably wouldn't happen because one of the uh, uh, clinical, uh, clinical trial, one of the chemotherapy agents that I was given actually can cause infertility. So no one thought that this was going to happen. Uh, but guess what? One month later, I got to make a phone call to my oncologist and tell him that, mm, surprise, I was pregnant with my now 12 year old daughter who's very healthy and 18 months after her, I gave birth to my also very healthy 10 year old son. Guys, talk about next chapter. Talk about a two by four. No one adequately prepared me for motherhood. No one told me what it was going to be like. And I was a cancer patient. So you would think that like stress, I would be used to it a little bit. No. Being a mother changed my life completely. It was an overhaul and it gave me the encouragement that I needed to move in the, direct, to the direction that I was supposed to. So God's two by four time, I was sitting in a park on the bench, my kids were playing and I wanted to get up and play with them, but my body hurt uh, being so overweight. I mean, all my joints hurt. I'm sure that, you know, the neuropathy that, that I had from chemotherapy didn't help at all. And I'd be winded just walking. I didn't want to be the mom on the park bench. I wanted to be the mom that was playing avidly, actively with their kids. So I knew something had to change. I had failed for years uh, to lose weight just miserably. And that was the two by four time. God's two by four saying, um, no, Sharon, you got to have to do it. So that was my motivation. So through diet and exercise in about a year's time, I lost over 150 pounds and that changed my world. I learned through that process that I didn't want to be a teacher anymore. 
So God's two by four time. <laughs> um, I changed careers. I went back to school to become a health coach and board certified, um, board certified health coach and personal trainer. So it was actually in that career choice, one of the very first, probably a month or two that I was practicing, um, I had a client come in my front door and changed my world when it comes to my viewpoint on the term next chapter. So she comes in super excited. You know, she got a promotion at work. She was thrilled or she should have been thrilled. She said all of her family and friends were saying, this is it. This is your chance. You can do anything that you want to do here. You're so blessed. You're so lucky. This is your next chapter in life. She's going on and on. And then at the end she says, but I'm actually feeling really scared because it's, I mean, it was a big jump up for her um, and stressed because I don't know why I don't feel the, all of the happiness and excitement that everyone says that I should feel. So right then and there, we kind of developed the view that I now have on the term next chapter. What if you stopped the outside voices of everyone else and listened to yourself? So there are no shoulds. No one else is telling you any shoulds. And instead of the chapters of a book that you viewed life as one giant cartoon scroll. Like the kind you know when the cartoon character unfurls and it goes down the hallway with the long ream of white paper sitting there. What if it was like that? So Jim, simply by changing that viewpoint, you take away the stress of having to get over something, having to feel something and then put it away or aside to continue with life. Instead, you interweave all of life's experiences into one long scroll that becomes the story of you. So just by changing that viewpoint, you automatically go, oh, wait a minute, I no longer am going to give other people the power to dictate my emotions because I'm going to take charge of my own story and I don't have to get over or get past anything. I'm gonna interweave that into my own story scroll of me. Now, that's easier said than done sometimes. And uh, just because I'm up here, in here, whatever you wanna call this, talking about it does not make me an expert at all. In fact, some of you may, may be thinking, oh, it must be easy for her. I'm sure she does this so well. You know, she teaches others. No. In fact, uh, I stink at it and it's easier to tell people how to do it than to do it yourself. And the last two plus years of my life have been insane. Um, I uh, was put to the test when it comes to shoulds of other people, as well as um, the story of my life. I, two years ago, separated from my husband and fell in love with a woman. Uh, uh, so that was a two by four that was bringing from God, I'm pretty sure that I'm all bruised up because finding out that you fall in love with a person and not the gender was probably the most eye-opening thing of <laughs> my entire life. To cap that off, just a year ago, I had uh, two spinal surgeries in quick su succession and had to alter my entire view on my own capabilities in life and what I was going to experience in life because of this. So what I'm trying to say by giving all of these examples is just because you know what to do doesn't make it any easier to do it. So in a moment of stress, find your someone, someone that you can talk to to help figure out whatever it is that your version of life should be whether that be a health coach, whether that be family, friends, um, a pastor, your doctor, a therapist, because guess what? There are people trained in this. And sometimes what happens is we get so caught up in our own emotions and seeing the problem or a situation from only our perspective that it takes someone who doesn't know you to look at it and flip your whole world around come at it from a different angle and make you realize that, oh my gosh, I never thought of it like that. And that switch allows you to change your view and move through the situation and continue on with your scroll. Because my scroll, after all of my life events, 
is unfurled out the door of the room, down the stairs, out the front door of the house. It caught a bus and it's out of town by now, I'm sure. That's, that's pretty much where I'm at in life with a scroll thing. It's crazy. So here's what I want to leave you with, guys. Um, please remember that it is your choice how much weight you allow other people to have on your emotions. You're giving them that power to help to dictate your emotions. And that's completely your choice. You don't have to do that. It is harder to do than I would like it to be. It's easier said than done. But you're worth the effort because the peace that you find on the other end of that is invaluable. And you're never going to find the peace, you know, listening to other people's shoulds in life. You're never going to find peace if you view life as a book that you have to move through the chapters of. And instead, you're a scroll person. and You can't understand why you can't do what they are all telling you you should do. So be patient with yourself. You know, being a cancer patient survivor isn't going to give you peace. Marriage and children, it's, it's not going to give you any peace. Doing what society thinks and tells you that you should do isn't going to give you peace. What gives you peace is creating your own version of life. Figuring out what your own shoulds are and moving in that direction. And please remember, it is completely up to you to paint the picture of your life. Please don't buy somebody else's painting. Thank you.